The African American Legend series highlights the accomplishments of blacks in areas as varied as politics, sports, aviation, business, literature, and theater. We will explore how African Americans have succeeded in areas where they had been previously excluded because of segregation, racism, and lack of opportunity. I'm your host, Dr. Roscoe C. Brown, Jr., and with us today is Woody King, Jr., founder, director of the National Black Touring Circuit and the New Federal Theater. And you keep busy, Woody. I keep all busy. All the time. <laughs> right, right. Well, let's start out uh -huh. by talking about the state of black theater in uh, the 21st century in the year 2008. Okay. Well, wh what's happening with black theater now? It, it's sort of like uh, permeated itself across uh, the United States. It's in black studies programs, it's in colleges and universities. Uh, there are even uh, bachelor's and master's degrees in black theater at places like uh, University of uh, Kentucky at Louisville, um, uh, Pittsburgh. Um, and these theaters are associated with universities. So young blacks are coming out of the universities trained in black theater, and they come into New York en masse. They mm -hmm. come into Hollywood en masse. But uh, I think. Um, uh, what's disappointing about it is most of these young people want to go, want to bypass theater and go directly into movies and television. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them want to uh, bypass the study of music and jazz and all that and go right into hip hop, mm -hmm. the hip hop uh, music and culture. And that is the disappointing thing. The state of black theater, as it exists in New York, uh, is still, uh, in a sense, uh, really uh, peopled by uh, those of us who are still around who started these theaters uh, in the 60s. Uh, the National Black Theater in Barbara and Tia. The Billy Holiday Theater in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. uh, the Black Spectrum Theater in Queens. Mm -hmm. And my theater, the New Federal Theater, and the National Black Theater. And uh, Black Doug Ward, the Negro Ensemble. The, the, the Negro Ensemble has re. Uh, surfaced. Um, they are being honored now by a tribute, by a major white theater tr paying tribute to all the work of the Negro mm -hmm. Ensemble. Uh, they're doing the first breeze of summer with Leslie Uggams. Mm -hmm. They're doing Sam Mark Williams' Home and Charles Fuller's Zoo Man in the Sign. Mm -hmm. At our own theater, the New Federal Theater, we are bringing back a play that received so much controversy almost 45 years ago by Amiri Baraka called The Toilet. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it was done off Broadway, won all these awards, but it's never been done since because he uh, throws a light on uh, the inner city school system and how it, uh, uh, in a sense, uh, turned out more uh, young people without after uh, really teaching them, just getting them, getting them in and out, get them in and out, get them in and out. You know, don't teach them anything. So I think uh, those are the kind of things that. Uh, 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 I'm doing and what the black theater is doing and what we are trying to do as a group of black theaters. But in a sense, uh, theater is evolutionary, evolutionary in terms of what's happened to black folks in the past 50 or 60 years. Uh, back in the 60s and 70s, we were talking about what happened to us 60 years before right, right, right. <laughs> and what we need to do to change it. Now some of that has just changed. We've got integration, we have opportunities, education is somewhat better. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have too many black folks going to jail because of racism. But things have changed, so that means that the uh, microscope that black theater is putting on black life has changed somewhat. Yes, yes, yes. It's and the, those of us who are older recognize when it changed because we helped to make it change. Right, right. It's, it's now, like an evolution, you know. And now it, the younger folks are looking into it. And there's not as much role stereotyping as there no, used no, to no, be. No, no, no. It was the angry black man, the no, angry no, black woman, no, the yeah. subservient black man. That's not true. Uh, African Americans are in roles in what we call mainstream. Mainstream. Uh, crime, uh, passion, uh, desperate policemen, housewives, whatever. Yeah, policemen, uh, doctors, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I think Sidney Poitier broke that mold. Mm -hmm. I mean, it began to break with Sidney Poitier. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, uh, what happened 
uh, to the civil rights movement, for example. Uh, when the civil rights movement was on, we were angry because we were protesting our conditions in America. Mm -hmm. And so our art reflected that, whether it was painting, mm -hmm. whether it was the, the, the unbelievable driving jazz that came along, and theater. You know, we, we spoke out. We raised fists. Same with the fall of apartheid in, uh, before Mandela mm -hmm. and after Mandela. You know, uh, I mean, the plays that came out of South Africa, I mean, it was amazing, amazing, and amazing. but now, like in America, we are exploring issues within our own families, within our own psychic, in a sense, and that's the same thing that's happening in South Africa and wherever uh, uh, integration uh, uh, or the fall of uh, overt segregation, you know, mm -hmm. uh, happened. It's a more exploration of who we are and what we can contribute uh, as a people. But theater also explores basic human emotions. Yes. Yeah. Love and anger and grief and deceit. You know, going back to Shakespeare, all mm -hmm. of those basic human emotions, which is why Shakespeare and plays have lasted so long. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the problems you have with politically or theme-oriented plays, sometimes they push down the basic interactions of emotion to get to the main theme. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the issues that black theater was criticized for early on. And as we know, as we went through the 70s and 80s and the plays began to be less political and more intrapsychic more about the pressure between families, mm -hmm. within families, the love and the hate and the anger and so on. So that's something that black theater's evolutionary, just as white theater has been throughout the centuries. Uh, well, you know, what happened, uh, Dr. Brown, is playwrights, whether they were uh, Ed Bullins, Ron Milner, August Wilson, uh, uh, Lonnie Elder, Charles Godone, all these major, major American playwrights, uh, Intezaki Shange, what happened is they had the anger in there. It was, but it was always a love of self, a love of family. Mm -hmm. The major American writers always had that, mm -hmm. you know. But they had the other thing that scared really white people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. what happened is after the fall, in a sense, so uh, uh, after integration. That mm -hmm. anger, in a sense, was just removed, and that 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 was all. There's nothing else, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, the the great works of um, August Wilson's mm -hmm. and his ten play cycle right. uh, explores what we are mm -hmm. going through. Mm -hmm. now, he, he, very seldom will you see any uh, white people involved. Uh, Ed Bullins in the Wine Time, mm -hmm. uh, in New England Winter, going to Buffalo, uh, Fabulous Miss Marie. You don't see any white people. They're not in his world. It may be something outside of that, you know, that they are searching for. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, I, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. That was all a part of it. Mm -hmm. But after uh, uh, integration, in a mm -hmm. sense, yeah. mm -hmm. it was no longer mm -hmm. uh, necessary to have to raise fists. It was no longer necessary to uh, uh, shout the slogans of right on, you know, uh, kill Whitey or whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, down with the system, you know, or the Black Panther, you know. Now, time-wise, that was about a 25-year period. Yes, yes. And, of course, that goes back from the 60s to mid-80s, mm -hmm. and now another 25 years, mm -hmm. and uh, the response to integration, the response to class struggle, the response to uh, problems within families, the whole question about where do we go from here? But By the way, where do we go from here? But you gotta remember, the people who come into theater are post civil they weren't around during they don't even know who Martin Luther King uh is mean? unless they were trained by some black person who was a professor like you or I, uh -huh. who makes sure they know who they are. Uh -huh. But these kids come in, uh, they uh -huh. are the Obamas of the world, uh -huh. they are, uh, you know, the uh, Patricks of the world, uh -huh. of uh, Massachusetts. These guys are really, in a sense, post Civil rights. That's right. <laughs> right, right. That so it's another kind of struggle. Mm -hmm. Yes, they may say thank you for what you did, yeah. but they're moving on, yeah. you know. Okay. So uh, where is black theater? Black theater is trying to exist in that kind of milieu That's now, right. mm -hmm. that kind of milieu. So we cannot, in a sense, uh, go back past uh, the civil rights uh, movement mm -hmm. in most of our plays. We can mm -hmm. only explore it mm -hmm. as it, as it uh, connects to now. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what's happening in some of the elements of black theater, they're reviving what we call white plays with black characters. Yeah, yeah. What happened? Uh, with, uh, uh, cat on a hot cat, cat, cat on a hot Come back, let's see. Now, that's an interesting, country girl. That's an interesting phenomenon. What do you think about that? I don't think too much of it because I know what I know what the uh, uh, producers and finances are trying to do, mm -hmm. and I know what the actors are trying to do too. Now, if we had to talk about what the producers are doing, they're taking a play. That was a hit before, mm -hmm. so the reviewers are not going to give it a bad review because right. mm -hmm. it's already proven. Mm -hmm. The actors are coming in and say, "Wait a minute, the, the weight of this play is not on my back. Mm -hmm. It's already all mm -hmm. I have to do is come in and show my craft." Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so I understand that. Uh, so whether it's Morgan Freeman doing it, or you pay the Murkison doing it, mm -hmm. or James Earl and um, Felicia, Howard, yeah. yeah, yeah, and Debbie Allen, and uh, you know. I understand that, you know, but uh, it's not doing anything for, quote, black theater. Mm -hmm. No, you know. it's a commercial venture. It's a, com it's a commercial it's, venture. Yeah. And black theater can be commercial because some oh, yeah. plays <laughs> do very, very well. Yeah, yeah. Um, several of them, River Nye went to Broadway, and several of them have gone to Broadway. Yeah. So the real point is the transition in the society and how that affects. What about the themes now? Are, are there any real penetrating themes in black theater now? Yeah, I, I think the themes vary greatly. They mm -hmm. they vary greatly. Uh, the young young writers are getting their form from the old writers, one who are well trained, mm -hmm. and they are exploring mother daughter relationships, mm -hmm. uh, father son relationships, mm -hmm. uh, and these you will very seldom see where they are exploring black-white relationships. Mm -hmm. So those themes are no longer, they are very, very distant, mm -hmm. you know. They might be a secondary part of a long mm -hmm. uh, a dialogue, mm -hmm. but it is not a part of it. It is, you know, I'm doing this play uh, called Colonel of Sanity by uh, Kermit Frazier. And this play is about an actor, really, who for years idolized uh, the techniques and skills of white actors mm -hmm. until he got the techniques and skills mm -hmm. and realized that the guy was simply uh, employing techniques and skills. Mm -hmm. He really didn't have a love no. for this art. Uh -huh. So those are the kind of things that you say, oh, wow, this is really different, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, but these themes are, in a sense, uh, continual. You know, they were a part in the past, but they weren't the major part. Mm -hmm. They were underlying themes, if you mm -hmm. know what I mean. You know, but they, now they have moved to the top of this, so like major themes. But well, what about plays that uh, are autobiographical or biographical, plays about Jackie Robinson, plays about Martin Luther King, plays about Rosa Parks? How do they fit into this scene? Uh, those are... I just did uh, uh, two plays, a tribute to the Negro League, Satchel Paige mm -hmm. and um, Josh Gibson. You know, I did a uh, tribute, and I mean, it was like amazing because these people had unbelievable private lives mm -hmm. that were theatrical, innovative, and different. Mm -hmm. So what happened is uh, Jackie Robinson uh, or Satchel Paige or uh, Josh Gibson, outside of the ballpark, mm -hmm. had lives they had to live, they had to exist. Mm -hmm. You know, I know you heard these stories about these great musicians, when they went on the road, had to go through the back door, had to mm -hmm. uh, uh, go, eat in the kitchen, eat near the bathroom. They couldn't eat in the white establishment. It, it was no different than mm -hmm. with the baseball players or the great artists. Um, one of my, two of my favorite plays that I've been producing and touring for years is on the life of Lorraine Hansberry, mm -hmm. called Love to All, Lorraine Hansberry. Uh, and her life was unbelievably rich. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, hit Broadway when she was 28 or 29 years old mm -hmm. and uh, was, had died five years later. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I also do a play on the life of Zora Neale Hurston. Hurston. Mm -hmm. You know, um, unbelievably rich lives. I do uh, a very controversial play, I think mainly because uh, uh, Paul Robeson Jr. Uh, and a group of people did not like the play mm -hmm. and its depiction of Paul Robeson. But there's nothing else out there on him but mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. so you can take it and shape it mm -hmm. however way you want to. But 
young people are absolutely taken by what Paul Robeson's contribution uh, was and is to Black America. Now, this gets us to the National Black Touring That's the Circuit National Black Touring Because Tour. that's what you're trying to do, get yeah. this work out across the country. Across Tell the us country. about the National okay. Black Touring the, Circuit. The National Black Touring Circuit, we, we started uh, 33 years ago. Uh, the National Black Touring Circuit, uh, we toured uh, Ghana, uh, China, uh, Japan, Lithuania, and we go to these festivals, and we have an all-black project, and sometimes uh, and we pass out literature. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, when we leave, they got a whole different view on black Americans, mm -hmm. okay? And in America, we go to colleges, universities across America. I mean, we've been doing it. I mean, you name the colleges. We've been to them. And there's long discussions afterwards about, but we do them about black American heroes. Mm -hmm. and most of the work in that are yeah. black American heroes, or jazz, mm -hmm. or uh, uh, Shades of Harlem, mm -hmm. uh, the music that was created in Harlem that came out of the Harlem Renaissance, mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, uh, Brother Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, it's a lot of biographical plays mm -hmm. that were huge hits in New York. Right. And they only ran a short while because they were black. Mm -hmm. So I, said, I, I pick them up and I take them around the world. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the theme plays about the struggle? How do they play, uh, you know, the civil rights struggle? How do those uh, well, play well, when you go to campuses? Okay, well, the civil rights struggle plays, uh, uh, you have to really explore them with a different kind of angle. Uh, on the advent of Dr. King's birthday in the 80s, Okay, we have we do a play called I Have a Dream, mm -hmm. but we place it around Dr. King's birthday. But within that play, you see the struggle of the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Within mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 Caribbean literature, we you will learn about Marcus, Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Imee Césaire. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can't uh, deal with the struggle in the Caribbean. On the campuses because the campuses don't have those kind of study programs mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. The black studies programs have diminished. Diminished. A lot of them are mm -hmm. run by white people. Mm -hmm. And they're sort of integrated into the larger stream of history yeah, yeah. and sometimes get lost. Yeah. Now, how does someone find out about the National Black Tour Circuit? They simply, and I, can I give the address yes, and all that? Definitely. All they have to do is write to National Black Touring Circuit 292. Henry Street, New York, New York, 10002. And they'll get a call from Woody King or uh, someone on the staff. They'll get a call now. and they'll get all our brochures in the mail. They'll get our um, uh, brochures in the mail. They can they get our email address. And, and they can that. arrange for you to come. Oh, yeah. yeah. No problem. No problem. Now, you also run the New, new Federal, Federal Theater. Theater. You founded that. Tell us about the New Federal okay. Theater. <laughs> I, you, I love coming on this show, you know. I love coming because <laughs> I get to talk about um, what I'm doing currently. Currently at the New Federal Theater is three one-act plays by Amiri Baraka. Mm -hmm. One is by Amiri Baraka called The Toilet. Ed Bullen's mm -hmm. Exploration yeah. of the Death of Huey P. Newton. That's right. Okay, and another play by a 28-year-old young writer named Hugh Fletcher, who's going to be heard about. These three one act. What is the play by Hugh Fletcher? What's it's that? called Amory. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's a unbelievable uh, kind of psychological study on a young girl who really, really is enamored by her stepmother's no, her stepfather. Mm -hmm. She's really enamored by her stepfather, mm -hmm. and she thinks she can take care of him better than uh, uh, her mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So it's it's like, wow, you know, how does this happen? How did a guy 28 years old write this? You mm -hmm. know, this is what I'm interested in. You know, and it's only 15, 20 minutes long. Yeah, well, you run them on the same night. Yeah, or yeah, you... yeah. There are three one acts. Okay. Uh, uh, Baraka's play is, makes up the second act of the play. Okay. It's 35, 40 minutes long. Mm -hmm. But uh, Bullen's play is 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's the first act. And uh, Marie, uh, Hugh Fletcher's play is 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, that's the first act, and then Baraka's the second. So 
people are getting an unbelievable array of theater in one night. Now, you know? when are these running, and how can you one okay, find uh, about tickets? They, they are running uh, uh, October 23rd through November 15th. Mm -hmm. October 23rd through November 15th. On what, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? No, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, great. Okay, and they can call Ticket Central, and the tickets, just they'll work it out, 212-279-4200. 212-279-4200. And do you have group sales? Group sales, yeah. seniors. Mm -hmm. um, churches? Churches. Uh, it's uh, youth um, uh, fraternities, mm -hmm. sororities. All these people usually, uh, uh, in one form or another, come down to our work and see what we're doing. And down is Lower Manhattan on Henry Street. Lower Manhattan on, on, on Henry Street. So you dress? We've been there. Henry Street for 39 years. That's amazing. Well, there are very few black theater companies that have stayed alive that long. Only uh, New Federal and the National Black Theater in Harlem mm -hmm. and the Black Spectrum Theater in Queens. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the Negro Ensemble Company is trying to be revived. In yeah, they're revived. They're resuscitating themselves. Well, I'd always like to ask you, since you're the guru of black <laughs> theater, in your opinion, what is the greatest black play of all time? Oh, without hesitation, A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry. The great Lorraine Hansberry. It changed the course of theater in America for black people. Now, why? Uh, because it showed non-stereotypical people who we could recognize immediately mm -hmm. as someone that we knew, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when you uh, parallel that person, that's like my uncle, that's mm -hmm. like my mother, that's mm -hmm. like my grandmother. And right away you're sitting there engrossed in their mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. And simply, it's very simple, very basic, mm -hmm. very unique. Aspiration, uh, yeah, struggle. For, for better life, better for a life. better life. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's what we all want. And it also had a political message, because when that play came out, the housing integration was an issue. And it was a question of whether they're going to move from the intensive black community to an integrated community. Right, right. That, that was an issue. I didn't know that. See, I didn't know that was the... But I know in Chicago, they had all these restricted covenants, and yeah. the play took place uh -huh. in Chicago. Um, but uh, in places like Detroit and uh, where I'm from, and uh, Cleveland, where my, a lot of my relatives are, these restricted covenants was everywhere. You could mm -hmm. not, you were restricted to a certain area. Mm -hmm. You just could not move mm -hmm. anywhere. And it was rare mm -hmm. that you could even get the down payment to move mm -hmm. there, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very much like, uh, that's not very much like, it's uh, interesting. I don't know if you walk through Harlem to see the yeah. unbelievable changes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I had a house in 1971 uh, for maybe $40,000, mm -hmm. and uh, 2002 it sold for $3 million. Mm -hmm. You know, you I'm saying, wow, what the what <laughs> You know, um, and of course, the financial crisis we're caught in today mm -hmm. uh, uh, will reflect itself mm -hmm. uh, on the arts. Mm -hmm. you know, Particularly on the oh, arts. Oh, God, you know, it's like... Uh, they, uh, the system uses uh, the problems of white America to obliterate black art, black culture, mm -hmm. anything, uh, you know, anything that we are struggling for, housing, mm -hmm. it will be harder for black people, mm -hmm. you know, education is going to be harder mm -hmm. for the funding because the funding will go to um, stabilize America. The, the finance, and of course, with so many of our theaters and cultural groups depending upon corporate contributions, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, and they've been talking about how those are going to decline. On the other hand, a society can't survive without a thriving culture. Right. Either they develop it themselves and do it without funding, or else the establishment funds all the great painters of the Renaissance are funded by the merchants of the time. Right, right, the right. Shakespeare is funded by the merchants of the time. So we've got to keep on struggling. Now, what do you plan to do to keep raising money for black theater? Well, what, what I plan to do is I usually um, send out maybe three or four hundred uh, requests to foundations 
uh, the 100 black businesses, uh, you know, as listed in Black Enterprise Magazine, uh, because right now the 100 black businesses listed in Black Enterprise Magazine gives less than one-tenth of one percent to mm -hmm. uh, black cultural events. And I don't know if it's because of their own struggle, mm -hmm. but I think they have to be aware. Educated. Yeah, educated to that need. Mm -hmm. And a group of us have come together called the Coalition of Theaters of Color mm -hmm. to try and educate uh, and try to invite them always to what we're doing. No mm -hmm. matter what we're doing, we want them to come in and see it, whether it's dance, music, art, theater. See what we're doing and uh, let them know that artists and businesses are not that far apart. Mm -hmm. You know, we are all black people. You They're know? all part of the stream yeah. that holds us together. Right. And everybody has to pick up part of that, whether right. it's in the schools or in the businesses or the healthcare industry and the housing, et cetera, because this is a stream that causes African Americans to move right through the society as we've done through the many, many centuries. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we found uh, going to the 100 black uh, businesses as listed in Black Enterprise, they thought that uh, when black groups came in, they were talking about a huge amount of money. And I think I had a meeting with uh, someone, I think it might have been Johnson Products in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, this was about eight years ago, look, if a hundred businesses gave a thousand dollars, and it could be, just do it in your town. Mm -hmm. it does, it's, it's not like a lot of money. Five hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars, twenty, you know what I mean? It, it really changes the dance theater of Harlem. Mm -hmm. You know, it that. really, it's an unbelievable uh, kind of input in the dance theater of Harlem, the Alvin Ailey, or the New Federal, or the Negro Ensemble. Uh, it's not like a lot. And of course, that's what you, uh, the National Black Touring Circuit, New Federal Theater, Woody King Jr., our guest on today's African American legend, talking about the future and the past <laughs> and the tradition of black theater. Right. Thank you.